Hey YouTube, Dr. Sean here. I'm a carnivore physician, predominantly meat-based, but I eat a little unusual than most carnivore physicians. And I'd like to share what I do. And I'm gonna start this out in this particular video by reviewing an important study that just came out four days ago. It's really interesting. So why would a carnivore physician be talking to you about the value of fruits and vegetables? Because they have some interesting compounds. I think they act like medicine. Probably shouldn't eat a lot of them, and you probably eat them, need to eat them in a certain way that you don't know about, and I want to tell you about it. So in this particular study, um, this is uh, what they looked at, and they found that fermentation, eating in the manner that uh, Dr. Sean advocates, what I say you should do is eating fruits and vegetables that have been fermented because they add very beneficial microbes while taking away the bad things like plant defenses and the carbohydrates, the sugars, the energies that you can do without, okay? So let's take a look at this um, uh, in this particular study. What they looked at was the polyphenols that are present in fruits and vegetables. And what they found is uh, that it actually increases the bioavailability of polyphenols. So polyphenols are antioxidants. So if you remember a few years ago, all the rage was antioxidants and you need to take them and it showed all this benefit. And uh, resveratrol was a big one, it was flying off the shelf, but yeah, doesn't really do much when you take it as a human. So the problem was is studying under limited conditions, a lot of in vitro uh, studies showed it had this tremendous impact, but it didn't work so well in humans. So what is the problem? The problem is, the bioavailability, it's not so well absorbed, not so well used by the body. It might get in there, but its availability for biological purposes uh, is not very accessible. Now, in this particular study, they found that the bioavailability was enhanced, increased when it was fermented, okay? And so we're gonna talk about uh, the benefits of fermentation with regard to these polyphenols, these antioxidants, which will be really important to you because it decreases inflammation, decreases oxidation, decreases free radicals. And you get a lot of free radicals just living. You get free radicals just exercising. So this is potentially very, very, I'm not gonna say potentially, it is. I'm coming out and saying it, yeah. Uh, it is very important for you to utilize these polyphenols and, and benefit from them because anything that helps you, uh, I should say things that help you reduce uh, oxidation and free radicals are worth considering, uh, but you gotta do the analysis of it, you know, all the risks, the pros and cons, or risk benefits analysis. So uh, we're gonna get into that and we're gonna take a look first of all um, uh, at the study. All right, so you can, uh, take a look at this study and pull it just out four days ago, and you can read it. And what they found out is fermentation through gly glycosylation. Glycosylation actually is what is happening during this fermentation process where it takes a sugar molecule and it attaches to these polyphenols. All these different polyphenols mole molecules become significantly more enhanced, their bioavailability becomes more available to you when you do this. And so um, without doing the fermentation, without having this glycosylation taking place, you don't get the ability to benefit from these things. So um, that is the study. But for most of my followers, you probably want to pull uh, the article. So you can go to something like Science Daily, some other um, uh, website, and take you can screenshot that and read the article, explain it better to you. Because... The study is pretty intense, or it's probably better suited for MDs, PhDs to explain it. And even the abstract was you know, having me scratch my head, okay? So it's pretty complicated. The majority of people watching me, following me, probably would do better looking at the study. So um, I want you to, to, to take a look at both of those, uh, especially the article and read about it and, uh, and become familiar, familiar with... Uh, how, how it works. So here are my ferments, okay? So I keep a lot of ferments on hand. I do not eat fruits or vegetables without fermenting. I am a believer that plants have 
uh, defenses in them and that they have these uh, microtoxins, small amounts that uh, can be used and leveraged uh, for medicinal purposes, beneficial, but I think consumed regularly as entrees, like, you know, people eat these big entrees of vegetables and stuff. It's too much of these small amounts in too long period of time. But if you ferment them, you get all the nutritional value of pre-fermentation, you know, that you have on, in these vegetables. Uh, you don't have to cook them, so you don't lose some of the value that, that's lost in cooking them. And it just improves the, the nutritional value and it removes uh, the concerning um, microtoxins that are in the oxalates, the phthalates, uh, the saponins, the lectins, all these plant defenses that we're learning about all the time, more of them, um, they get eliminated when you ferment to, to the extent and depending on the co conditions of that fermentation. And also carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are not essential for a human being. They are essential for the microbes, some microbes that live inside your gut, not all of them. And that's why you feel like you're gonna die if you don't eat them, because they're telling you to eat for them because they will die, but you don't need them. In fact, I believe you do better without those carbohydrates. So these are all the different types of carbohydrates, or, or rather not carbohydrates, but uh, just the opposite. Um, my fermented foods, and I eat a variety of them. This is what I have on hand basically all the time in my refrigerator. So uh, when it comes to, to ferments, I tell people, Noah's Ark, you want um, two of every kind of species, a small amount, and to, to benefit you know, from um, taking them. All right, well, uh, if fermentation improves the performance and the bioavailability of polyphenols, uh, in the course of studying for this video and trying to prepare for it, I found something interesting. Do you know another thing that improves the polyphenols is protein? Yeah, protein. In this particular study here that, is, that came out this year, um, back in uh, January, it found the benefit in enhancement of polyphenols uh, present in coffee when you add protein from dairy, and particularly dairy. So dairy was found in the particular source of protein to enhance the bioavailability of these polyphenols, the polyphenolic compounds in coffee. So what does that mean? Let me just sum it up. If in this study, if you add coffee, cream, dairy to your coffee milk, it was, was used in the particular study, it actually increased the availability and doubled it, doubled the anti-inflammatory effects uh, registered and followed in immune cells. So that's beneficial. So um, I've been drinking my coffee black, but now I'm going to change. I'm going to start adding uh, protein to my coffee and uh, see if I can get, um, you know, enhancement uh, from uh, the addition of my, my, my protein uh, added to my coffee. So this is the uh, article. Um, you can take a look at it and read it. Recommend taking a screenshot of that. And you can, of course, um, take a screenshot of this one so you can pull the actual study and read it for yourself um, or read the article that explains the study, which I think for most of you probably would be more beneficial. So here's a, here's, here's kind of sums it up. So um, I, I have uh, some organic whipping cream, which is going to have that protein in it. And I would recommend if you're going to add dairy, why not add something that has a lower amount of carbohydrates? I just reviewed how the addition of milk uh, in my, in my uh, recently, in an 18-day period of time, increased my deep subcutaneous fat when I drank raw organic A2 milk and I reduced my caloric intake a relative amount. So it wasn't, you know, for you seco crowd, calories in, calorie out. It wasn't because I just added additional calories. It was... Um, a neutral amount of calories, and I increase my deep subcutaneous fat. So I don't want to add those carbohydrates. So um, one thing you could consider doing, which would be, uh, you know, rather than drinking milk, is adding whip, whip, uh, heavy whipping cream, which will have lower carbohydrates, higher amount of, of fat. Now, interesting, uh, what's happened a few times, at least see how close these, these uh, big bottles are. Many times in the O'Mara household, we're all coffee drinkers. 
Uh, people have gotten up in the morning, a little squinty eye, and instead of pouring the whipping cream, they poured kefir into their coffee. Now, not a good taste. It didn't taste good at all. So uh, we, you end up tossing that cup of coffee. Uh, but what is interesting is because I started thinking, well, may, uh, maybe I want to drink. Maybe it's an acquired taste because you know what? When you work with me, I found people hate ferments, but I have techniques how to get them to like ferments, and it's really important. So I'm doing this technique with me for getting myself to be able to put kefir into my coffee, which sounds awful, doesn't it? You should try tasting it initially. Well, how do you get used to it? Well, here's what I did today. I took some of this kefir, poured it into this glass, and then I added some coffee flavor. Yeah, that stuff was good. I could get behind that. It was completely different than a cup of coffee with a little kefir added to it. So get some kefir, add a little coffee to it. Now you got this beautiful mocha flavored kefir. Kefir, that, that's a, it's a winning, winning combination. So uh, try that out. And once you get this enough into you, my guess is eventually you'll be able to change that amount and gradually switch over where you're adding kefir to that and then you got the benefit of the protein and the benefit of fermentation uh, added to that coffee. And I'm going to call it the double whammy effect. So double whammy effect. All right. So uh, another thing I want to get into is um, uh, how I eat. OK, so, you know, people always ask, show me a meal. Uh, you know, what, the, what does, uh, you know, Dr. Sean eat? So here I am, 100 percent grass fed, 100 percent grass finished beef. I like Piedmonte's, have no financial affiliation, but some great beef. I get their hamburgers and that's some aged cheddar that I've melted onto them. And, uh, and uh, I just cut it two slices right out of that package and throw them on and grill them that way. Save some time. You don't have to fool around with patties and stuff like that. Plus, I like it thick because I like my, my hamburgers rare in the middle. So anyway, when I eat those burgers, I always eat with ferments. Okay, I'm always mixing those microbes in there. So now you understand that it increases the polyphenolic compounds and enhance, enhances the bioavailability, but also when consumed with protein, you get enhancement of those polyphenols. So you got this just affirms these studies are really show why, you know, uh, I advocate eating fermented foods with meat. You don't want to just eat meat. OK, so the vegans, in my opinion, are not getting all the benefit because they're not getting that meat. Uh, but the carnivores that are 100% not eating any polyphenolic compounds are missing out that benefit. Now, I'm right in the middle a little bit, but I'm going to say I'm more with the carnivore because, you know, calorie for calorie, this is mostly meat and just tiny bit, and I call it a garnish. It's almost like you're going to, like I used to put ketchup on, on burgers a long time ago, just a little bit of ketchup. Well, that's what you want to do with ferments. You want to put just a little bit of ferments to go along with that meat, chew it in and mix those microbes in together. So this is a typical meal for me. I'm having a little bit of all of this stuff with these burgers. And when I mean a little bit, I'm, a, I'm talking like a teaspoon. OK, just added, you know, so there's about eight to 10 teaspoons, um, you know, uh, so the whole thing, maybe quarter cup, half cup of this stuff, you know, added, uh, added to it. And I'm, I don't dump apple cider vinegar on my burgers. I put apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon, in one of these San Pellegrino bottles. So an 18 ounce San Pellegrino bottle, I get about a tablespoon of that apple cider vinegar in organic. I like organic brats and adds those microbes to it. And it's a really effective way to eat. So I think my approach is kind of gets the best of both worlds. And uh, the two extremes, the carnivores and the vegans, you know, 100% carnivores, 100% vegans, or 100% whole food plant-based, if you're eating that way, um, you're missing out on that. So, you you know, uh, microbes rule the world. That's what I say. Microbes rule the world. You got to be optimizing your microbiome. All right. So let's take a look at my um, my recommendations when it goes to choosing ferments. OK, so this will this will be important. Like people say, how do you find out ferments? I once had a client who who uh, uh, added he had had her, uh, hemorrhoids. This poor guy had hemorrhoids his whole entire life. He goes goes on a carnivore um, at age 70. And he is delivered of hemorrhoids. Never happens again. He's eating meat. And uh, so um, I convinced him to try adding back, you know, the ferments. And I'm saying it's these plant toxins that are causing your hemorrhoids. 
and he was very skeptical. Uh, brilliant, brilliant business guy, CEO of a, a banking system, and uh, very skeptical. So he adds it, adds back. He takes um, uh, he takes a teaspoon, <laughs> a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons. He is so scared of the the sauerkraut. And I told him get fermented sauerkraut. Uh, he calls me up uh, the next day and he tells me all I did was one or two teaspoons of that sauerkraut. You told me I didn't want to do it, and boom. I got my hemorrhoids back. So he'd been free of them for three or four years and boom, he's blaming me, you know, for, you know, Sean, Dr. Sean's uh, ferments. But I said, show me that bottle. Show me what you've got. And uh, he showed it to me. Guess what? Ah, not fermented. He might as well have been eating vegan or, you know, whole food plant-based. It was not fermented. Okay. Fermentation changes, enhances, improves food. So getting rid of those microtoxins. So Anyway, um, that's what you got to do. And how do you know? I mean, if, if he's a really bright guy, runs a banking system, how do you know? This is how you know. Okay, look for these words. Raw, live, live cultured, fermented, living, non-pasteurized, unpasteurized. Those words have to be on the label. If they're not on the label, it's probably not fermented. And don't buy it. Don't eat it. It's not what you should be getting fermented foods. The other tip is fermented foods are sold in a refrigerated, um, uh, you like my spelling there? <laughs> sold in a refrigerated section, okay? So they should be chilled, they should not be on an aisle. If it's on an aisle, it's in a bag and a jar and it's sitting out, that's not fermented, that's pasteurized and you're, you're gonna run into toxins, issues with toxins, so it should not be on a shelf. The other tip I want to tell you about is those microbes, they, the fermentation process happens in dark, you know, areas. You don't go, you don't go ferment outside in sunshine. You don't ferment with a light around it. You ferment in dark areas. Okay. So what does that mean? All these jars are sold in these stores, um, back in this, like in this particular manner here. When you, when you go to a store and you see all these, uh, you know, ferments spread out and I'm going to, open this up a little bit and you can take a screenshot of all those wonderful fermented foods. Now, not every one of those seen in there uh, are fermented. It's like these, these, these have sugar in them. That's not fermented. Uh, these are not fermented here, but the rest of them uh, really are fermented. But um, here's the problem with all that. Look at all that light on those. Nobody's talking about this, but I'm the guy who studies the microbiome and that light is harmful for those microbes. So what you want to do when 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 I go shopping, um, I, I I reach back and way in the back down there in that dark area, and I pull the one in the back. Okay, don't take the ones up front. They've been exposed to all that light, you know, particularly all night long and all day long. You know, the ones on the edge. So reach in the back and pull out the dark and, and do the clerks a favor. Don't make a mess. Put it back. You know, if you're eating healthy, you can just do more. Okay, don't be a messy consumer. OK, just, you know, uh, put put the jars back, but reach the one in the back. I always do that. Leave it better than I found it. And uh, that will help you out. So uh, screenshot that. So you have the the uh, uh, the ferments and uh, and then uh, I'm going to show you um, my last tip that you should be aware of my strategies. OK, so take a screenshot of my strategies and uh, you you can use this to optimize your health. They, Everything I've talked about in this video pairs very well. But I'm going to give you an executive summary of these things, okay? So I haven't ever done this before, but, you know, if, um, if you, um, you can't do all those, you want to just get started, here are the big ones, okay? I call it meats and microbes, okay? Eat meat and fermented foods, meats and microbes. Dr. Sean's new tagline, meats and microbes. So uh, eat those fermented foods. And another one is fasting and feasting. So fasting means extended fasting. And feasting means, just like sounds, when you recover from your extended fast, you're going to eat a lot. So this is ancestral living, okay? This is what our ancestors did. They didn't sit down three meals a day or snack all day long. No, oh, we hunted to extinction megafauna like the woolly mammoth. Ah, we feasted. And then we go for a long period of time because they were hard, you know, to, to kill with bows and arrows and, you know, um, and spears and stuff. So feasting and fasting. And then sprinting and MIE, maximum intensity exercise. So do those uh, sprinting and maximum intensity exercise. 
No more going to the gym for an hour and a half. We're, we're talking, knock, your, knock your, your workouts in at about you know, 10 to 20 minutes, maximum intensity, finish up and get out. Um, I like uh, uh, Dr. Jay Quash's approach to exercise and, uh, and Dr. Doug McGuff. You know, so you can read more about them. And, uh, and then hot and cold, uh, challenging things, brief, hard things through hormesis. And uh, one of my favorite clients is a, is a client who's a, a retired pilot. Um, he came up this expression, you got to be tough to be healthy. Okay, so he kind of summed up everything Dr. Sean had, was asking him to do and encourages other people. Uh, Cameron Hitchcock is his name. And um, he, he was the number one rated pilot in his airlines, in the big, big one. I don't want to say the big airline, but it was a big one. You guys definitely float it. And he was their number one rated pilot. He is a high speed load drag pilot. And so he is really optimizing himself. So you got to be tough to be healthy. Um, you can get more information if you're interested in working with me, uh, like Cameron did and other people. And I'm looking for very motivated people to study. And uh, I'd be happy to consider you. So uh, if you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to me so you can follow my content and get it out when it's released and hit that little alarm thing so uh, when you when, when I produce content, you can become aware of a new video coming out. And uh, as you, know, uh, you, you enjoy these videos, share it with other people so you can um, pass this information insight on to others so they have the benefit. And again, as always, I like comments. Um, I love questions. I love observations, and uh, uh, so please uh, interact with me so that uh, uh, I have the benefit of learning. I'm always learning from my followers so and my subscribers. All right, well, thank you very much for watching this video, and we'll see you on another health-optimizing video. Dr. Sean out.